Rika Rux 2001 here, update video. I got a new setup for uh, doing reviews. I got myself my very own coffee table. It was from a family member who passed on a few years ago. They wanted me to have this, and uh, here it is. But that's a different story for another time. If you want me to talk about this, please check out my other channel. But what I do want to talk about is this third-party Super Nintendo controller. This is not a cheap Chinese... Uh, knockoff controller. This is actually one made by a company called TTX Tech. If you don't know what TTX Tech is, um, they make basically stuff like uh, the Retro Duo, um, the Super Retro Trio, stuff like that. They're a company that um, that likes to make uh, third-party accessories for uh, consoles, controllers, stuff like that. Now, there's two different variations of the uh, TTX Tech uh, controller. You can get the uh, standard North American Super Nintendo style controller, or you can get a similar to a Super Famicom or PAL Super Nintendo controller like what I have right here. Now, the thing is, um, well, if I could actually find the right controller, um, I'm going to compare this to a actual Super Famicom Junior controller, if I could find it. Um, ah, here it is. Just for our direct comparison. In fact, here it is compared to an actual Super Famicom Junior controller. You may be wondering why did I grab a, that instead of a standard North American controller? Well, I wanted to compare the uh, colors of both and uh, just to make it a fair, fair comparison. On the left is the uh, TTX Tech one, and on the right is a generic Super Famicom Junior controller. If you remember from my other videos, um, I got this for only dirt cheap, which is $17. So, I mean, if you were to look at these two side by side, um, the biggest difference you're going to notice is obviously the labeling for the A, B, Y, and X. This is actually embossed, that extra piece of plastic that is on here. This is actually a sticker. Now, it may not look like a sticker at first glance, but once you actually peel in the corner, you'll notice, oh, this is a sticker. Another difference is um, the official one has Nintendo. Older controllers would say either Super Nintendo Entertainment System or Nintendo Super Famicom. Reason why I grabbed my Super Famicom Junior controller is because this actually looks more like the redesigned controller that came with the Super Famicom Junior or the Super Nintendo 101. Another difference is the select and start. Obviously, um, these are more raised up, similar to a Game Boy. These are flatter, which may be a better grip for you, or maybe not. The D pad is just about the same, although. Feeling both of them, they're no different. They both feel pretty good. Now, the face buttons are the biggest difference. Other than the colors, um, now you notice X and Y on the actual Nintendo controller, they're convex just like the A and B buttons. But if you look at the Y and X buttons on the TTX Tech controller, they're actually concave just like a American Super Nintendo controller or the NES uh, rectangular controller, they had concave buttons as well, if you ever used a NES controller. And also on the top, you've got uh, your L and R buttons. Um, now, if you were to take these apart, um, which um, if you want to see this controller disassembled, um, I'd recommend checking out this does not commute video. It's essentially the same thing. The uh, L and R buttons have little hinge pins. On the official Nintendo controllers, they're actually, um, they actually have a metal piece that goes through the hole and that holds on to the hinge pins. Well, on these, the hinge pins are literally built into the shoulder buttons, just like a Nintendo 64 controller. It may wear out from time to time, but I've yet to experience that. So, now let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On an actual Super Nintendo controller, this is a 102 model controller. The American one with the redesign also has this information. It says Nintendo controller model number SNS102, Super Famicom Nintendo here, and the American Super Nintendo logo, made in China. 
on the uh, TTX Tech one. Um, mine's a newer variation. The one that this does not commute has is an older one. His did not have the TTX Tech sticker on here. His just had a Made in China sticker right there. Mine is a controller made on the 11th November of 2015. And um, I'm not going to bother opening this because, um, at least not until uh, it needs a cleaning. So, if something were to happen to this controller, I could just take this to TTX Tech and say, Hey, can I get another TTX Tech controller? Something like that. Again, if you want to see this controller disassembled, please watch uh, This Does Not Commute's video. But aside from that, that's another difference. Also, the cord length. Let's compare the cord length. The thickness on an actual Nintendo controller is pretty thick. On the retro, on the TTX Tech, I almost called it RetroBit, but to be fair, RetroBit and TTX Tech are basically the same company. The uh, thickness may be shorter, but let's compare the length of both controllers. As you can see, um, the uh, TTX Tech one is a, just a bit short, as you can see. I don't know if you can see on camera, but. This one is about uh, a foot shorter than the uh, official Nintendo redesign controller, and everyone knows the official Super Nintendo controller in America and Europe is ridiculously long. So if you want to go after this controller, um, well, depending on how far your console is from your couch or chair, you may want an extension cable. Now. You may be asking yourself, is it possible to take the cord off of this controller and put it on here? The answer is, well, it is possible, but you would need a soldering gun. And also on the redesigned uh, Super Nintendo controller, the 102s, they have the uh, connector soldered to the board. Unlike the 005, which everybody knows and loves, that has a detachable cable. So, if you want to... Uh, switch the cables on both of them, then your best bet is to basically um, use a soldering gun. But aside from that, that's basically a comparison between these two. And in fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, I do have the RetroBit version of the uh, Super Nintendo controller. In fact, um, I'll go ahead and get uh, the uh, Nintendo uh, Super Famicom controller off them. Um, if I could actually get it untangled. Okay, in fact, um, let me go ahead and unravel the RetroBit controller. In fact, it's made by the same company. Here's it compared to the RetroBit variation. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the parts were interchangeable. I'll do a separate video on this controller. Similar to a Model 2 Sega Saturn controller and a Super Nintendo controller, this controller is very nice. If you love the Sega Saturn controller, specifically the Model 2, you're going to love this controller. And um, normally on the back there would be a TTX Tech sticker on here, and this one doesn't have it, unfortunately. But it says Super Retro Controller Retrobit, made in China. Also, I paid $3 for this controller. As for this TTX Tech controller, um, I still have the sticker for the price on how much I paid. And I only paid, I don't know if you can see on my finger, but I only paid $5 for this controller. That's pretty cool. So, anyway, that's uh, my review of the TTX Tech um, Super Nintendo controller. I gotta warn you, there's two variations of the Super Nintendo and Super Famicom controller. There was two uh, models. This is the Model 2 variation, and there's also a Model 1 which you want to look out for. The Model 1 looks identical to uh, actual, well, the Model 1 has a label on the top that, says, that has an oval on here. It doesn't say Nintendo on it, but it looks like uh, it's just a blank oval piece that could have said Nintendo, but if it did, Nintendo would probably sue uh, TTX Tech. And also, the D-pad on that one looks similar to a Retro Duo controller, and everybody knows the Retro Duo. The console may be great, but the Retro Duo controllers, at least the earlier ones, they're a piece of junk. The directional pad is the worst thing of it. Well, to be fair, the Retro Duo controller can be modded with an actual Super Nintendo controller pad, but you'll have to do some tests and stuff, but aside from that, if you guys want me to show off gameplay with the 
TTX Tech controller, um, I will make a part two. So, would I recommend the TTX Tech? I say yes. As long as it doesn't conk out on you, because I heard a person on YouTube who had the same exact controller. Um, he had two of them, and both of them died on him, unfortunately. The guy's YouTube channel was called Smerrells, and uh, he wrote a comment on another YouTuber saying that he had two of these and both of them died out. And um, so, I don't know if the same thing will affect with the retro bit variation, since they're both made by the same company. Anyway, stay tuned in the future where I'll probably do a review of a retro bit uh, variation of the Super Nintendo controller. You can also get these wireless or um, in red, but I'd recommend the wired version. I heard the wireless variation is not the best, so that's my review. Thanks for watching.